Some of you are attending the Gama Festival for the first time, some of you have attended for a few years and some for many years. In the 17 years since its inception in 1998, Gama has become the Aboriginal equivalent of the World Economic Forum, held annually at Davos in Switzerland and attended by an exclusive gathering of two and a half thousand political and business leaders from around the, the globe. That organisation is committed to improving the state of the world by engaging business, political, academic and other leaders of society to shape the global agenda. And so too, we here at Gama are committed to shaping the agenda of the Aboriginal world. I say this because at other conferences you will learn about rights and culture, but here you will learn about the economic challenges, the steps that need to be taken to, to ensure that there are economic opportunities for Aboriginal people and at the same time to strengthen our cultural genius. Here you will learn from our entrepreneurs and from people who think hard about Aboriginal aspirations for economic development. They may also be great cultural leaders, great singers and dancers who carry the ancestral law of this land. Here you will learn about the Aboriginal businesses and ventures, innovations in financial products, innovations in social enterprise and outstanding partnerships between Aboriginal corporations and the large and small corporations whose leaders are committed to achieving parity for us. And as you have seen, this is where the leaders of Australian governments, ministers and advisors to Australian governments come to make announcements, to test our resolve and to make friends. And if you listened closely to what Gullaroy was saying this morning, you will well understand that in this world you do not break a promise. And he listed every Prime Minister that he's spoken to and he's still not achieved his vision. Take note of that message. Do not break your promise. And he also explained the challenge in a speech at my university in 2007, in a speech that set out the goal of constitutional recognition of Indigenous Australians. He said, there can be no settlement if Indigenous people remain the most disadvantaged citizens in the nation. He asked us to come with him in facing this challenge. Let me explain briefly the scale and nature of this challenge. There are more than 600,000 Indigenous people in Australia. Over 50% are young. And they will join the working age population in larger and larger numbers. We can expect in the next few years more than a quarter of a million young Indigenous Australians who will need jobs, but who are not sufficiently literate, numerate, educated, trained or work ready to find a career. Their lives are vulnerable and the scale of the tragedy grows year by year. I could point to many consequences of this impending tragedy, but the one I want to remind you of is the youth suicide rate in Indigenous communities. Because of Gullaroy's leadership, there have been no suicides in this region for six years and the socio-economic indicators have improved in his community by 20%. We need the reforms that he has identified urgently if we have a hope of ensuring a good life for the several hundred thousand young Indigenous people who come behind us. We have no more time for cowardice and compromise. Those of us who have assisted Yolngu people along the way to their grand vision of building the capacity of Yolngu culture to thrive and survive while enjoying economic equity, talk about the magic of Gama. Let me talk about this magic. It is a mixture of the ancestral power of this place, the Yolngu culture in this place, the principle of reciprocity and Ganma, the meeting of Yolngu knowledge and Western knowledge, and the injunction to share knowledge and to show respect for others. Compassion, the desire for the equality of Aboriginal people and for opportunities for young people to achieve their dreams. Here at Gulkula, working together at Gama, we can and do, as Noel Pearson put it, take a leap of faith, we could even touch the stars. We are reminded each day at the Bungal and at other ceremonies that this is a very special environment. One of the rules of this ceremonial context is that we must show respect for each other. We should not be divisive or discordant. Last year our theme was bipartisanship. That is the parliamentary or political equivalent of the Yolngu principle of peace and goodwill during ceremonial events such as this one. Because of this rule, this is where men and women with a stake in securing the future gallery has spoken of, join to discuss and debate the issues of the day. Take the temperature of the politics and the politicians, forge alliances and make friendships, and take sustenance from Aboriginal ceremony at a place steeped in religious importance. This is the energy of Gama. The zeitgeist of Gama is the never-ending search for balance. 
but most importantly for what is right, what will work to overcome the poverty and disadvantage in our communities. Aboriginal leaders are drawn here because it shows what is possible, what can be done, what lies beneath and what might be achieved. Last year, Jawa gave us three messages. We seek to be Australians, but we also seek to be younger people within Australia. And he spoke of constitutional recognition, but the dangers of the future for our young people. Younger people must take responsibility, and he urged all Aboriginal people to take responsibility individually for their future. He said, without every Aboriginal person, person taking responsibility um, for his or her life path and refusing to be a victim of history, we will not have the collective capacity to achieve our vision. We must take note of his wise words. To be fully empowered within our cultures and in the Australian nation to shape that future, <coughs> we need to enable every Aboriginal person to make choices that the choices that are needed to have better lives. As Noel Pearson has stated, tackling welfare penancy is not just a behavioural change, it is also a massive structural and institutional change. On that note, Jawa said last year we need to take back responsibility. And he also said that the government bureaucracy must work for us, not against us. He described the way that government interferes in our lives as like an octopus with its arms tangling themselves up and leaving us high and dry. His third message was, let us take the lead with business on our own land. You heard Gulleroy say this morning that land rights need to be woken up. So too did Mr Jumbawa Murrawilly say that land rights needs to be revitalised. People need the power to have a say about their land titles, what happens on their land, how many houses are built and where, what businesses are established, doing what and where, and they need that power here in their own homeland. The historic decision by Gulleroy to reform the administration of land rights by taking power to reform, um, or by taking power at the local level was made some time ago. It was announced last year at this place and Gulleroy repeated his message again this morning. He has devised a way to keep the recognition of ancestral Yolngu rights and titles and at the same time to move forward with modernity, with modern land arrangements that do not impact on those ancestral rights. He wants reform urgently. His clans, companies and entities have established a number of businesses that now employ a significant Yolngu workforce. He wants change to continue on the path to economic development so that Yolngu have a secure place in the, Yolngu econ in the Australian economy. So many Australians are misled by false ideas about the Aboriginal world. But Aboriginal leaders who understand the profound nature of their responsibility, like Gulleroy and Noel Pearson, have set out a program of reform. I've played my part by advising Andrew Forrest, who is with us here today, to, and he will talk later about his report on Indigenous employment and training. Join in the spirit of Dharma and do not adopt a stance of critical cynicism and arrogance. Many of the ideas in his report originate with our best Aboriginal leaders and thinkers. Welfare reform, land tenure reform, and governance reform are urgent matters. Do not dismiss these ideas, no matter how hard you think they are, because most of you do not have to walk that hard road with us. When Gulleroy spoke this morning, you may have heard the intermingling of compassion and determination in his voice as he addressed himself to the matter of the Northern Land Council, handing over power to the people of this region to govern their own land affairs. Australians who are not driven by a desperate mission to ensure a bright future for the young people think they can indulge in the politics of moral vanity by refusing these hard messages. Do not be fooled. We will not allow the soft bigotry of low expectations to stand in our way. This is the balance he sets out for us, to play to the angels in our nat nature and our nation, not to be distracted by the demons and the devils. Talk of human rights and reconciliation with Indigenous people in Australia are insufficient they are too weak to provide the toolbox necessary for tackling the twin problems of poverty and economic exclusion that are at the heart of all the health and socioeconomic disadvantages of the Indigenous population. A longer, healthier life expectancy for Indigenous people will not eventuate without attention to our economic circumstances. I leave you with that message and I urge you to join in the spirit of Gama and help us bring about these very difficult reforms. Thank you.